Hi my friends, welcome back to the channel. I'm Allie Wilkins. So today's video is gonna be a reminder for you if you are a priestess, an oracle, a seer, a medium, a channeler, <laughs> or a channel, a light worker, a medicine woman, a shaman, anything of that realm where you are serving your gifts as part of your mission, specifically if you are a bridge between realms. So I wanted to share something that I learned or was told yesterday that really stuck with me and I'm like, more people need to hear this. So um, I'm in this course right now, again, for the second time called Hathor Rising with one of my teachers, Kara Gilligan, who I've worked with for years. I highly recommend her. Her Instagram handle is Akara Sophia. Um, and she was sharing with us about the priestess path. And something that she shared within our group call yesterday, she was talking about how challenging it actually is to be in this role and this time of the world. Because in other lineages and in other times, when you are someone who had these sort of gifts or was going through these sort of initiations, there was support. Like people knew what was happening. People understood what was happening to you. And there were training programs or there were apprenticeships. There were um, traditions that would happen when you showcase certain sorts of gifts that would train you how to utilize them, that would that would bring you into that tradition, that would that would teach you how to be in that role. In the United States, we do not have that. In Western civilization, I'll say that. We don't have that. We're kind of just like thrown into the sphere, like figure it out for yourself, have fun. And the people in these other roles um, were in smaller, tended to be in smaller communities or smaller cultures. And so they maybe were channeling that information for their smaller community. We are thrown in the center of a patriarchy that is where there's extreme levels of unconsciousness and we're asked to do our gifts in that sort of space with no support unless you go find it on yourself by yourself. But there's not going to be anyone who really initiates you into what you're experiencing. You have to figure it out for yourself. And in a space where our environment is not nurtured, the world itself is very toxic and unconscious. There is not a connection to earth like we used to have, which is like the basis of of how we would need to be operating in one of these roles, that we feel this deep connection to the Divine Mother, that we feel this deep connection with the earth itself. And we're it's like we're thrown into this realm of toxic waste or poison. I'm like, good luck. And this really this really um her saying this in this way really helped because Often we don't feel respected in the work that we're doing. And that's really what her message was. It was that we need to feel, we need to give ourselves respect as a priestess, insert whatever word that you use. We have to hold ourselves in deep respect and reverence as a priestess because nobody else will. Maybe the people that are, are around you, like who have the same sort of gifts, because we understand what goes into it. We understand the depth of energy and power that is required to do the amount of work that we're doing on a moment by moment basis. But the rest of the world doesn't really get it, right? And so I was sharing in the group, like this really touched me because I show up in service all day, every day. This is what I'm doing. And sometimes it feels like there's not nearly enough respect given for the amount of energy that I'm holding, the amount of transmutation that I'm doing the amount of work that I'm doing and the amount of things that I offer for free, just like this. P.S. If you ever want to donate, I have in my description a donation link. I don't expect it, but it would be nice sometimes. <laughs> That'd be fun to get a little PayPal notification from YouTube. But anyways, so my point is a lot of times we don't feel respected because people honestly just don't understand what it is that we're doing, right? Like when I'm at the family dinner table, at Thanksgiving and people are like, so what do you do exactly? And I tell them and they're like, no, but like what result do you create? What like tangible, what tangible thing? And I'm like, I help people uncover their soul. They're like what, <laughs> what does that even mean? And so a lot of times what we're doing isn't explainable in words and you, it can only be experienced and people just simply don't understand what goes into it. 
Um, also, a lot of times, this was another thing that she was sharing that was really eye-opening for me. And it was that we give so much respect to indigenous cultures, which we obviously should, but we have to give ourselves that same amount of respect. And a lot of times, and she was speaking to this as well, but I under I feel this as well. Being a white woman sharing uh, m multiple lineages, because I work with the Egyptian lineage, I work with um, Native American lineages, I work with Tantra, Tantric lineages, I work with many like shamanic lineages i'm studying all over the place and to be a white woman sharing some of this sometimes is challenging and it can be difficult and sometimes it's just like you're just this stupid white woman so privileged blah, 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 blah. and it's like that yeah i am privileged i understand that on a deep level and we still get to hold ourselves in respect because what we're doing is incredibly challenging. The times we're doing it in are incredibly challenging. And the fact that we have no support is incredibly challenging. So let this just be a reminder, like give yourself respect, even if nobody else is going to give it to you. Give yourself respect, hold yourself in respect, know that what you are doing is important. And something that I see a lot is that people are for the work that you're doing. So when you're offering your service to someone else, please charge what you desire. Please charge what you feel is an equal exchange of energy so that you can fully do your work. A lot of times people don't understand that in order for me to do an Akashic Record reading, I cannot have any other work the rest of the day unless it's like admin type work, but I'm not gonna have other calls the rest of the day. My energy is fully focused on your energy for that whole day, before the session, during the session, and after the session. That means that the night before, and the uh, now especially the night before and the day of, I'm not going to be indulging in anything really. I'm going to, I'm always, I'm pretty much always completely sober, but like I'm not going to have caffeine. I'm going to probably not eat before our session uh, because for me, sometimes I feel that I receive more information on an empty stomach. I'm going to be preparing for our session on an energetic level. It's not just the time that we're together, not to mention the years of study, the years of practice, the hours sometimes per day that I'm spending in meditation or in ceremony or in my own practice that allows me to be a space of consciousness, to download information, to go into your soul records. <laughs> It's a big deal. So make sure that you are charging what it is that you actually desire and that you need for that time. Don't charge pennies. Don't charge pennies because the work that you're doing cannot be replicated by just anyone. And if you're brand new and a beginner at charging for this work, yeah, but you can charge what you want, but can make sure that you're getting what you actually need because sometimes I see like, my Akashic record readings are 333 and I feel like I should be charging more. I see sometimes on Etsy and stuff, it's like, it's like $20 Akashic record readings. And I'm like, oh my God, the quality of these must be so horrible. Or the consciousness of the person operating doing $20 Akashic record readings, they either don't need to make any money or they don't have any expenses or something or they're doing 10 of these per day, which means the energy is not going to be most likely as pure. They're going to be all over the place. I don't want that person doing a reading for me. And in my, mostly I don't want that person in my energy field. I don't want that wealth, con that poverty consciousness in my wealth, in my field. So anyways, I wanted to share this. And again, I want to share my teacher's name, Kara Gilligan. Her Instagram is Akara Sophia. All of her courses are great. All of the work that she does is really powerful. I've done almost everything that she's created to my knowledge. Um, and she was just sharing this yesterday in our group, our group call for the course. And it just was a perfect reminder for me in that moment, because it can be very challenging when people don't get what you do. It's not like, Oh, I'm a marketer. Or, oh, I'm a real estate agent or, Oh, I sell toothbrushes or <laughs> it can be hard to put into words what we're doing. And it's like, Oh, I'm just shifting timelines from the past, present and future. No big deal. <laughs> we're just rearranging the quantum field. It's not no biggie. Like what we're doing is a big deal. And we have to have respect for ourselves, even if other people don't know how. So thank you, Kara, if you're watching for that message. Um, it's always important. I just want to remind you 
to honor the lineage, the person that teaches you different things, because none of us, like we can channel information and receive downloads, of course, but we're most of the time we're learning things from other people and you have to make sure that you shout them out, that you give reverence to that person. Um, especially if you are operating in a priestess lineage where even sometimes energetically you are being led and guided and upgraded through someone on an energetic level. I know that sounds kind of like crazy and weird, but it's true. So like I feel some of my teachers and I have a whole team of people that I work with. I know when they're in my energy field and they're doing certain things to me and I'm like, I've given my permission for them to do that because I trust them, but I know when that's happening. And so just make sure that you're giving reverence and honor to your teachers who share things with you. Don't claim it as your own because nothing is really our own, right? Anyways, I hope that this helps you today. Hope it reminds you to take yourself seriously, to give yourself respect, to hold yourself in respect, to charge respectful prices for your work. And yeah, if this supported you, please like this, please subscribe to the channel, share it with somebody you know could utilize this message today. Um, go follow Kara on Instagram or on Facebook. Um, and comment below what you received from this. And if you feel called to donate, I would love it, but you don't have to. There's truly no expectation. I was just joking. Um, but it's always there. If you feel like you receive a lot of value from my content and you want to donate, you want to pay for a cup of coffee for me, I would greatly appreciate that. So anyways, I hope you guys have a beautiful rest of your day and I will talk to you next time. Bye.